that is called time travel. Now, I have, I'm one of the few people that I know of, and I don't really talk a lot about this, but I'll say it here anyway, and that is that I have physical evidence of time travel on my website. I, um, I'll give you the website that is, uh, it's on, and it is uh, uh, www.aage-nost.com. So it's www.myfirstname-mylastname.com. If you go into the picture gallery and you go to page eight and you scroll down a little ways, uh, I don't know, probably seven or eight rows down, there's two pictures next to each other and they're greenish in color. It is pictures of a, a street. One picture has leaves on the trees and uh, there is rain on the ground. You can see the light glistening off the road. And the other picture has no leaves on the trees and the road is clean, no rain. But the picture is taken at the same time. That is what's called time slippage. I was sitting at the computer and I was watching th- uh, um, uh, a uh, newspaper over in Europe because they had some cameras around town. And I was watching this camera, you know, observing this street. And I did a mind experiment. And I brought myself to, uh, actually the first picture I took was just, just that, it's a picture of the street. And uh, a little while later, quite a while later, actually, I went back and I tried to bring myself back to the same time as I took the first picture because I wanted to see if I could do this. And uh, I found myself at that time and I took the picture. I did miss it by one minute. So there's one minute apart in these two pictures. But I don't think one minute should be enough to get rid of all the leaves on the trees and, uh, you know, dry up the road. I don't think so. So there is something that happened here. And that is the uh, photographic evidence of time travel that I can actually explain. And if you read the text below the pictures, you'll uh, you'll see how I did it some. And also in the back of the book, I explain how people can do this kind of time travel. There, there is a way to do it. I have an electronic instrument that I have done. And I'm, I've got some really strange experiences with. And that's what BBC television wanted me to demonstrate for them. And I did on that video time trip. And uh, but the thing is, I learned a lot about time after that video because I didn't have a full understanding of timelines back then. Uh, now I do understand a lot more about it, and that is that what is happening in the timeline you and I are right now may not happen in another timeline next to us, even though we look the same, we're going through the same thing or doing somewhat the same, but there are differences. And that is what happened in those two pictures. I was in a different timeline, but at the same time. But there were different conditions in the picture. One of them had leaves on the trees and rain on the road, and the other one didn't. So this could be something interesting for you to look at. It'll get you into the uh, picture gallery too. I got over 5,000 pictures now that is unbelievable, including pyramids on the moon and the huge hangars up there and water tanks and people walking on the moon without space suits. NASA prints. So uh, have a look at that. This is stuff that I wrote to NASA and I got a lot of these uh, prints that uh, they really didn't want you to have, but they slipped through the cracks and I Another one I got up there, uh, a picture of, in fact, on the first page is uh, 
two-mile-long cigar-shaped ship floating across the surface of the moon, throwing a shadow on the ground, and it is clear as a bell. There's no question what it is. That's a NASA print, and I, I got the print from NASA myself, so I know it's a good print. Well, so anyway, well, that you're explains... talking about the, uh, the time stuff. So what do you think of the Mandela effect, what people are saying about the Mandela effect? Oh, I, I think it could perfectly well be uh, probably several explanations. So one of them may be uh, just a common amnesia or... It could be time slippage. It could be that you slip into a different uh, timeline and uh, you operate and you are there for a while where things are different. Where maybe Mandela didn't exist or maybe he did die like what you know the term come from. In fact... Uh, Diana over in Germany, she had an incredible experience that way too. She takes the bus to work every day, and there was one day she was standing at the bus station, and uh, the bus never showed up. And he showed up 30 minutes later, and she says, what happened to the bus that uh, I normally take? And he looked at her like she was crazy. There is no bus at that time, he told her, and showed her in the brochure. There was no bus going at that time that she normally takes the bus. And the next day, she walked down into the regular time then, and then the bus came at that regular time again. So she had a time slippage. Has any of you ever come back from the grocery store with a handful of stuff, and you put your car keys on the island in the kitchen, and you walk and put things away, and you walk back to get your keys, and they're gone? And then a few hours later, you find them, yeah, that garnet, they were on the island after all. <laughs> Yeah, like well, I've happened. experienced, yeah, I've experienced things I felt was the Mandela yeah. effect, you know. <laughs> Time uh, slippage. Uh, uh, it happens. It, or, it, or some people believe that there's two different timelines merged together is what caused it. Yeah. And it would had to do with CERN. Absolutely, and these things happen. But, you know, our our uh, analytical mind goes to work on it and said they, uh, oh, you know, they just, I uh, just didn't see it. You know, they explain it away. <laughs> yeah, well, see, that's, that's the same thing with uh, uh, Michio Kaku. You, you know, he's looking at time travel in a physics sense. Yep. It says it's possible, <laughs> but it's improbable. But we see it in a... In a uh, metaphysical sense, you know. Exactly. And he's not seeing it in that in that form. He's only seeing it in the physical. Yeah, and uh, using um, uh, physics, you can actually explain how time travel can happen. It's just that you need the energy source of a sun to make it happen. And of course. Not too many of us have that, so that it's not going to happen his way for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was saying. I mean, it's it's improbable. I mean, it's possible, but yeah. it's probably not going to happen, <laughs> or at least not in our lifetime, in the way yeah. physics says it. But yeah. not doing know, it. I, I believe the, the Incas and uh, the Mayans and you know several of the other cultures already had conquered it using you know their mental abilities. Yes. That's how many of them disappeared. They walked on right, to, yeah. well, there's two schools of thought on that one. Some thinks that they, they, they were alien spaceships that came and picked up the Mayans, and uh, well, that could be, but also they could walk into a parallel reality and decide, we like it here. And grass is greener over here, huh? <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> In another dimension. Yeah. Well, I, I personally, yeah. I believe there are other dimensions. I mean, even physics says there has to be at least eleven for quantum computers to work. Yeah. You know. So, where they're at now—that's another story. I There's so much more that we don't know ourselves. 
I want you to go ahead, Kim, but I just want to tell him that we'll have to have him back because at the end of this, we say, how do you know you're on the right path, the right spiritual path? So uh, we got just about five minutes. So uh, Kimberly, back to you, but just sort of you will come back later and help us on how do you know you're on the right spiritual path? Probably feels good, but back to you, Kimberly. <laughs> I was just going to say that there's just so many different things that we don't know because of our intellect. We, there's got to be more out there than what meets the eye. And many of us know that know the fact that we're not alone. We never have been. So, yeah, there's got to be different areas that we have no knowledge of or have ever even heard of at this point. You're exactly right. And I think most of us can actually uh, almost prove it to ourselves that we are never alone because you have you ever seen shadow people? The ones out of the corner of the eye, you see something or someone tall, kind of dark figure over there. And when you look over there, they're gone. Yeah, you can see them vanish right in front of your face, basically. Yeah. Because the periphery of the retina in the back of the eye can pick up higher vibratory light than the center can. So you will see them in the periphery of your field of vision. But when you look over, then it's the center of the retina and you can't see them anymore. This is getting more and more, more and more people saying they're seeing these shadow people. And that is because our vibration is rising. There will be a day when you're going to be able to see them all the time not too far from now because of this ascension we're going through because we are moving into a region of space where the vibration is higher. It happens every 26,000 years when they're going around the great circle. Uh, this is a show on its own about the ascension part of it because that can be explained two different ways and it's very possible to do both ways. If the people understand it, they can do it. Very few do understand it. And uh, like the caller said, nobody has ascended. I bear to disagree because in a few weeks, I'm going to have uh, Father Tiso on my show. He went to India and he observed ascension. So, uh, yes, there are people that have done this. And in India, it's a commonly accepted fact that people can ascend. Once you get out of New Delhi, of course, Many you know where they are. You got to get out in the country yeah, up in the mountains. Many cultures are higher vibrational level. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, and uh, he's right. Uh, Joshua Bethel Ahmed probably also did that. Well, we only got a couple more minutes left. You want to tell everybody how they can find you and where your radio yeah, shows are? Um, I would say go to Amazon. And uh, have a look at the, all the subjects that is in the books, spiritual science, higher conscious thinking, and how to access the universal consciousness. Look, I have a listing of all the subjects in it. And look at that and see if there's anything that catches your fancy. If you do, then you know what to do. Otherwise, go to um, one of my websites, uh, www.universal-consciousness.com dash show dot com and my radio one of my radio shows are on there and the other one is www dot broadcast team alpha dot com that is another radio show uh, Nori and I and Tom are doing and uh, that's where you re- and say uh, friend me on Facebook I uh, I pretty much accept everybody except the Russian girls that all wants to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. You gotta I get some of careful. them. You, you got to be careful on Facebook who you accept. <laughs> yeah. Or ain't that the truth? Well, thank yeah. you, everybody. I really appreciate your time, Augie and Tommy and Kimberly and Ahmed, for helping us with our ACO club. And I'm going to ask everybody to prove that I didn't use the word shadow people first in paranormal. So that'll be your homework for next week. <laughs> because I started You're using clear. that, and I can't prove I'd started it or not. So somebody proved me wrong. 
that's for all you paranormal people out there. And I think Wikipedia have found it. But I'm so old, I started with the Internet. And, and I was using that in my spiritual 